Hello and welcome. This video is brought to you by the streamingadvisor.com. Tailor your entertainment with streaming. What we're looking at in this video is the Amazon Prime app for Roku. And what you see on the screen right now is actually the unupdated version that you know has been around for a year, a few years. This is based on the last refresh that they did with a menu along the top of the screen. But this is changing. If you have not gotten your update, you should soon. And if you would like it, let me show you what you do to update your Amazon Prime app. Go into the Prime app here, and you're gonna tap the star button to pull up this little drop-down menu. One more time. You're going to go to the app. You don't press OK. You just hover over it, press the star button, pulls up the menu, and you check for updates. There's a more blanket way to do this, and we're going to show you how to do that just in case there are other apps on your Roku that you know are aching to be updated. Jump into settings. And then make your way down to the systems here. And in the system menu, you toggle down to software update. Tell it to check. And any channel on your Roku that needs to be updated will update. And if your system itself needs an update, it will do so. But we're going to jump into the Prime Video app now and take a look at what the new look for the Amazon Prime app is. And what you'll see as we jump in is that it's been modernized. Apparently people have started deciding that the modern apps are apps with vertical menus on the left side instead of across the top of the screen. Looks more like a TV app instead of, say, a web page. Amazon has simplified what their menu looks like and I think it's a little easier to use. You see here that it has movies, TV shows, and sports, which is Amazon's big things now. You know, they've got their library content, they've got their original content, and they've got the sports things that they're starting to pay a lot of money for, including the NFL. When you jump into the movies section, you'll see that each section is pretty well defined. Anything that says Prime in blue is going to be free. And anything that you've got to pay for, I think they do a pretty good job of making it very clear that you have to pay for it. See underneath each title it says Rent or Buy, or in some cases, you know, use a free trial. Versus the Prime things right under the description of everything it says included with prime included with prime included with the prime so you shouldn't get confused as to whether you have to pay for something or whether you've already paid for it further down into the menu they make some things even more clear but in the movie and tv section you'll see you have you know a couple of rows of things that are free with prime and like i said completely labeled, and some things that are purchasable. In general, I find this setup a little easier than having to look for the little prime flag in the corner. You know, maybe some of you will say, well, I thought the prime flag was easier, but hey, you know, time marches on, unfortunately, for some of us. But in general, this is a pretty well-organized way to approach the kind of massive amount of content that Amazon has to process for everybody. This freebie section, popular TV with ads, this is Amazon's old IMDB TV rebrand as freebie. And you might even have a freebie app separate, but... Amazon has got it all integrated in with the Prime Video app. 
As you see, everything's broken down by type, you know, popular TV, documentaries, kids and family, and so on. When you jump into sports, you start seeing how Amazon's trying to focus on this going forward. Amazon, Apple, and others are really getting into the live sports and signing contracts with various leagues to get a hold of stuff. Amazon right now is supporting the WNBA. And it also allows you to sign up for league-based subscription services and if you're part of those league based subscription services you can jump right in through the sports section and check things out for instance all of the baseball games are from NLB TV and as you see it tells you right there free trials are available jumping into the NFL section this is gives you a feel for what's going to be happening on Thursdays in the fall Thursday Night Football is going to be free for anybody who has an Amazon Prime subscription. The Major League Baseball section again, as is very clearly marked. Most of it is available as a free trial with MLB TV, but Amazon does have some free baseball. In general, if you're a baseball fan that lives outside of your, you know, your your favorite team's area, MLB TV is a real treasure trove. There's a lot of people in Red Sox Nation and Yankees Nation that can take advantage of that all over the country. In its search area, you've got your traditional search grid, but you've also got these little jump-off points for a genre. It's going to take you into the same thing you were looking at before. Basically, this is like the all section. So you're going to have movies and TV shows based on whatever category that you select. Again, streaming has become all about content discovery. Because everything is out there. This is just another filter to kind of jump in with to help you figure it out. And... Amazon has set it up so that you don't have to use a drop-down menu. You just go into search, go into find, see what you want to do. This other section here called Feature Collections, it's really not very big right now. It's, I, I can't imagine that it's not going to grow immensely. Right now it's just three little choices. So expect to see that change. Now when you jump into the store, this is a very straightforward section. This is the stuff that you have to pay for. So there's no confusion here. These are services or individual movies and TV shows that you can rent or buy. And it'll tell you right down there underneath each of them. You see free trial, rent or buy, buy. Not everything is available for rent. Not everything is available to buy. Not everything is available for free trials. But it will tell you the ways that you can access these things. The new app also makes a much more straightforward approach for the Amazon channels. Amazon used to make this easy, but over time the channels kind of got buried. But they have got it straightened out now. You can see everything that is available by just going to the end of this row here. And you can see each type of Amazon subscription channel broken down by category. If you're unfamiliar with Amazon channels, what Amazon channels is, is a way to subscribe to various subscription services through your Amazon account. So if you sign up for something like BritBox or Stars or Showtime through Amazon channels, you'll be billed through your Amazon account instead of having a separate bill for Showtime and a separate bill for Cinemax and so on. That's going to play into another section of this new app, which is the Live TV. Live TV's app on the Amazon Prime app is interesting because it's kind of like what you get when you have an Amazon Fire TV or a Fire TV stick. Those interfaces have featured a live section for a long time, 
that integrates what people call fasts, free ad supported TV. And there is a group of channels, a large group of channels from Freebie, which is Amazon's free streaming service. Not only does Freebie provide on-demand things, it also has its own, you know, like I said, we call them live channels. Other people will argue and say, well, this isn't a live channel. This is just a bunch of stuff that's set up and, you know, plays in order. Well, sorry, guys. That's what people always call live TV. Your, your local channels aren't live either. Seinfeld isn't coming on live. You know, it's in syndication. So this is sort of like the new syndication. But you see that there are a number of channels broken down and all queued up for you. If you're unfamiliar with this, it's very much worth exploring. And you'll see that this broken down into a grid so that you can see what's coming on and when. And that's pretty cool. It's like a traditional TV viewing experience. But what they've done with live is it's both a content discovery and sort of a, hey, wouldn't you like to subscribe to this or that? For instance, you see this AMC Plus section. And the AMC Plus section has channels. You see it's got a Better Call Saul marathon kind of going on. What they're doing here is showing you what's available through these services kind of in an attempt to get you to sign up for it. You can't just jump in and you'll notice it says free trial, free trial up in the corner. Free trial for AMC+. Plus. That's because if you sign up for AMC+, Plus through Amazon channels, you can then access the programming in the live TV section. But you need to understand something. Maybe you have AMC Plus or Cinemax or Discovery Plus or something like that. Maybe you subscribed already. Maybe you've got access to it because you went to the website and signed up or you signed up using a Roku ID or an Apple ID. I don't know. You're not going to be able to access the programming through this live TV section just because you actually have it. It's only going to work if you're using their system. So if you're using their highway, you can use their little grid here. But just understand that, and unfortunately there is no way to say I already have a subscription or anything like that. The Roku isn't going to automatically recognize that you have any of these things, and you know that's just the way it is. But of course, you have the option to cancel whatever system that you're using already. You know, if you want to get Showtime or Stars through Amazon, you can just stop your subscription at the end of a month and jump in, do it through Amazon. But you know, that's only if you want to be able to integrate everything in this way. I like it because it reminds me of digital TV or cable or something like that. But it can get confusing. And you want to make sure, if you do want to sign up through Amazon, that you cancel your other subscription. Just, you know, I said, don't get yourself double charged. The free with ads is going to be all based on freebie. This kind of cuts through the problems that people were having for a long time, saying, you know, how come I'm seeing ads on Amazon? Huh? You know, how come I'm seeing ads on Prime? You never were, but... Amazon kind of did a poor job of helping people understand that what they were looking at was IMDb TV and or Freebie. By going into the free section, it has it all broken down by Freebie. It's only Freebie. Yeah, you know, they had free to me, you know, which which made it confusing because that would be prime contact stuff as well as content from freebie and or IMDb TV, you know, what whatever they called it at the time. But this section is very clear. These are things that are free with advertising, and that's the way it is. In the My Stuff section, you can see anything that you have purchased, as well as your 
viewing list. That's helpful because, you know, as you make a watch list, you want to be able to get back to it. And, you know, sometimes you say, oh, I forgot I even added that, right? So you got your watch list right there at the top. And then the rest of the information is available. Finally, we're going to jump into the settings. And you're going to see some of the ways that you can clarify some things on here. For one, it'll show you whether you've got your Prime membership lined up. The subscriptions section here allows you to manage the subscriptions that you have. We don't have any, which is why our live TV section was a little lacking. But if you do, it's like I said, if you add Showtime, if you add Cinemax, if you add BritBox, any of these things, Discovery Plus, you're going to be able to manage it through the app. You can change your languages here, but... Don't change it from the language that you actually speak. It might be interesting to see what the menus look like in another language. You're just going to end up hating yourself for it. So, trust me, just, just skip that option. It shows you how to get in touch with them for help, which is great. And you can even you know, get suggestions as to how to use your Alexa within the app. So, this is a good new look for the Amazon app. I think it's quite a bit more intuitive and it's a little more straightforward than what we've seen over the last couple of years. And you'll see, they're going along with a trend. For instance, Tubi recently did the same thing. You'll, you'll notice as we launch, you jump in with everything and see the menu is on the left side of the screen. In general, I would expect to see this with most apps. I expect to see this on Hulu, for instance. You know, probably a, a refresh. HBO Max also does this. They had a, a refresh on their app. You launch it. Jump into my profile. And again, see, left side menu. So, you know, whether you like it or not, this is sort of the future of the way that apps are going to be designed for TV. I, I really expect to see most kind of adopt that look. And that's that. I hope you found that helpful. I think that that's a really cool new Amazon app myself, but, you know, that's just one man's opinion. Let us know what you think about it in the comments. If you have any other questions, ask away and we can try to address it in future videos. As always, I'm Ryan Downey, the streaming advisor. Please like and subscribe, and as always, stream on my friends. <laughs>